time management. Yeah, uh, you know, I think one of the most imp uh, a great goal in life would be to not have to be in a given place at a given time. Uh, that is a that is a recent vector that I'm trying to work towards. Uh, obviously, it's not fully realistic. You know, you have meetings and stuff, but at a even more basic level, you have a job, right? Most people, most of us, have jobs. We got to go in a certain time of the day and can't come back at a certain time. And uh, somebody else is telling us what to do all day long. Uh, and I think it's really worth, whenever you can in life, if you have the choice optimizing for independence rather than optimizing for pay. Because if you have independence uh, and you're just accountable, let's say, on your output as opposed to your input, uh, that's the dream, being accountable for your output rather than your input. Um, we're used to, you know, humans evolved in societies where uh, there was no leverage. So if I was chopping wood or carrying water for you, you knew that roughly eight hours put in would be equal to about eight hours of work that came out. But now we've, we've been invented leverage through capital, through co-working, through technology, through productivity, you know, through all these means. So we live in an age of leverage. And as a worker, you want to be as leveraged as possible so that your work has a huge impact and it won't take as much of your time uh, or physical effort. Like you'd rather work with a bulldozer than uh, work with, uh, you know, with your hands the same way you'd rather work with a computer than you would with a pencil. So those are just forms of leverage. So you want to use as much leverage as possible. Um, and a leveraged worker can outproduce a non-leveraged worker by a factor of a thousand or ten thousand and with a leveraged worker the choice of uh, you know how they make the decision is far more important uh, their judgment is far more important uh, than how much time they put in or how hard they work so for example a good software engineer just by writing the right little piece of code and creating the right little application can literally create half a billion dollars worth of value for a company but uh, 10 engineers working 10 times as hard just because they chose the wrong model or the right, wrong product or wrote it the wrong way um, or let, put in the wrong viral loop or what have you, um, you know, they basically wasted their time. So inputs don't ma match outputs, especially for leveraged workers. And so what you want to do in life is you want to be in control of your own time. So you want to get into a leveraged job and then you want to get into one where you control your own time and you're tracked on the outputs. That would be the ideal. Because then, if you do something incredible to move the needle on the business, they're going to have to pay you. And they're going to have to pay you, and especially if they don't know how you did it, <laughs> because it's innate to kind of your obsession or your skill or your innate uh, abilities, uh, then they're going to have to keep paying you to do it. This goes back to what I talked about in the first podcast. Um, if you have specific knowledge, you have accountability, and you have leverage, then they have to pay you what you're worth. Um, and if they pay you, uh, if they pay you what you're worth, uh, then you can get your time back. And if you get your time back, then you can be hyper-efficient. Then you're not doing meetings for meetings' sake. Then you're not trying to impress other people. You're not building checklists and writing down lots of things just to kind of make it look like you did work. All you care about is the actual work itself. Uh, and when you do just the actual work itself, you'll be far more productive, far more efficient. You'll work when you are kind of feel like it, when you're high energy, and you won't be trying to struggle through when you're low energy, and you'll regain your time back. Um, so I think choosing what kinds of jobs and careers and fields you get into and what sort of um, you know, deals you're willing to take from your employer, assuming you have that luxury, uh, will give you m much more free time and then you don't have to worry as much about time management. Uh, you know, the, the, the image that I like to put in my own head, what I would love to do is I would love to be paid purely for my judgment, not for any work. <laughs> you know, I want the robots to do the work. Uh, or you know, capital or dollars being deployed somewhere out there to do the work, um, or computers to do the work. But uh, I want to be paid for my judgment, and I think every human should aspire to that, where we're eventually just becoming knowledgeable, uh, or, or we are knowledgeable about certain things, and we're being paid for that unique thing, uh, and we have as much leverage as is possible in that business, whether it's through robots or computers or what have you. Uh, and then we can also be masters of our, and of our own time, because we're just being tracked in outputs and not inputs. Yeah, think about CEOs. You know, people always complain about CEO pay. They don't understand how it works. Um, think about this. Uh, if you're running a public $100 billion company, right, like you're CEO of a real company that's worth $100 billion, uh, I'm sure you can find competent people who do that job for half a million bucks a year, for a million bucks a year, two million bucks a year. But imagine someone comes along who demonstrably has slightly better judgment, like, you know, 85% instead of 75% of the time they're right. Well, you will pay that person you know, 50 million, 100 million, 200 million dollars, whatever it takes, because that 10% better judgment is steering a 100 billion dollar ship. So CEOs are highly paid because of their leverage. So small differences in judgment and capability really get amplified. 
look at professional sports. Uh, nobody wants to watch you know, the third place, the bronze medal winner. Everybody wants to watch the gold medal winner. So the gold medal winner will get paid multiples because their leverage, their reach is to millions of individuals, whereas the bronze medal winner has a reach to hundreds or thousands of, uh, 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 of individuals. Um, so they can just so just for being a marginally better, like running that quarter mile in you know a fraction of a second faster, they're going to get paid a lot more, orders of magnitude more. Um, so leverage just has that effect and magnifies things. So being at the extreme in your art uh, is very important in an age of leverage. And you're never going to be the best in the world at anything unless it's something that you just absolutely love to do. Um, you know, no one can compete with you on being you. No one can compete with me on being me. So when I think about what my profession, what my job, uh, what my work is, it's just being me. What am I doing on, on Periscope right now? Why am I here? I'm just me being me. I don't have any other good explanation for it. But I just know no one's going to beat me at being me. So if I ever need to make money off of it, I can. And I'm going to be darn good at it.